Ted Nugent coming up later, but first, the big story, the Trayvon Martin case. Joining me now is George Zimmerman's attorneys, lead counsel Craig Sonner and co-counsel Hal Urig. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Let me start with you, Craig Sonner. You've been leading this uh, defence of George Zimmerman for a while. Let me ask you a difficult question. Your client's been subjected now to uh, national attention, the like of which very few people ever have to face. Uh, the vast majority of Americans believe that it would be in the best interest of American justice if he was at least to be arrested and to be properly investigated, given that on the night itself of this incident, uh, neither of those things appear to have happened. Do you believe that it might be in your client's best interest now if he was to turn himself in? Well, for, first of all, there's no warrant for him to be arrested, so he can't. He does, there's nobody to turn himself into. Uh, when there, if the, if and when there is a warrant, he will turn himself in. Uh, I, we're keeping track of it, track of him. Law enforcement is keeping track of him. He's not hiding out. He's hiding out from from law enforcement. He's hiding out from the people who are trying to kill him, actually. And uh, at this point, there's an ongoing investigation. They're going to. They're doing a thorough investigation, and. Uh, in cases like this, they don't always make an arrest right away. It, it keeps speedy trial from running, so they, it gives the law enforcement more time to investigate the case. So justice is being done, and the investigation is being done, and so th th there's not an issue there. Is, was there? I, I forget what the other part of your question was. Well, no, I think you've, you've pretty well answered it. I mean, in the case of justice being done, isn't the problem here that justice has not been seen to be done properly in the sense that George Zimmerman, on the night, was simply allowed to go home, having used a firearm to kill an unarmed young teenager. I mean, that's what happened. And most Americans believe that that was fundamentally not justice being served. Well, justice is not being served because all the facts of that night have not been brought out. Not a single thing has been brought in into the media to, that would be admissible in court. Those things, all those facts need to be brought out. And justice being done, there's been no justice for George Zimmerman. He's been tried and convicted in the, in the court of public opinion based on facts that are not even true, presented as facts, uh, things that, that, don't, that don't add up, that don't make sense. And when all the facts come out, when the police finish their investigation, you will see that George, George Zimmerman was acting in self-defense that night. I mean, let me put to you just some facts, which I believe are facts, but you can certainly query that if you want to. One, uh, George Zimmerman was not supposed to be carrying a gun while operating as a neighborhood watch official. Would you accept that as a fact? George Zimmerman was on his way to the store, and he was allowed to legally carry a gun with him because he had a concealed weapons permit when he went to the store that night. But if he was acting as a neighborhood watch official, then you would accept as a fact that he should not have been carrying a weapon or indeed using it. The one thing we know as a fact is that George Zimmerman was attacked by Trayvon Martin. He was punched in the nose, he was taken to the ground, his head was beaten on the ground, and he acted in self-defense when Trayvon Martin was shot. That's the facts that we know. Right, well, but they're not facts, though. they are supposition. Well, in a moment, however, you don't mind, but that's not actually a fact, though, is it? That is a sure. supposition based on what George Zimmerman has told you and told the police. But in terms of factual evidence for that, that is still not clear, is it? It's not factual evidence yet. Once, that's right. That's why I'm, that's why I'm telling everyone to, to wait before you rush to judgment. Wait till the facts come in. Wait till this case goes to court. Wait till the facts come in. Admissible evidence in court, not what's admissible evidence in public opinion, because what's admissible in public opinion are doctored 911 tapes and whatever anyone else wants to say about George Zimmerman. It's been open season on just destroying this man's credibility, destroying who he was, and, destroy and he's, he can no longer go back to the person he was being involved in his community, mentoring children. Uh, it, you, you've destroyed him. The public, the media has just absolutely destroyed him unfairly. And the conclusions you're, you're, you're drawing in your questions to me show that you've already reached that same conclusion too. And what I want you to do and what I want America to do is to step back, use your cool head, and listen to the facts. Listen to what comes out. Listen to what the police investigation shows 
And I think when you do that, you will see that George Zimmerman acted in self-defense. Right. The, the 911 operator that he spoke to told him not to follow Trayvon Martin, and yet he did. Do you accept that as a fact? No, they did not. Absolutely not. That's okay. not a fact. If you listen to the tape, okay. if you how, listen to how the tape, Rick, if you, and, that's, and if that's, you the way, that's the way it's been spun. Okay. That's the way it's been spun, but that's not what the operator said. They asked, are you following him? He said, yes. The operator said, we don't need you to do that. Now, the way that's been repeated is he was ordered not to do that. Words mean things. It's the same it thing. very specific things. No, it's not the same thing. For you to suggest that he's not entitled to have a firearm with him, that he's licensed to carry, because while he was on the way to the store, he happened to notice someone and undertake the responsibility of a watch captain to call the police and report it, is absolutely ludicrous. He's got a license to right, carry. Let me, let me, stop, you, let me stop you there. Mr. Yuri, sure. let me stop you right there. It's very, yeah. it's very interesting. Sure. So what you're saying to me is that he was acting once he made that call to the police, to the 911, he was then acting as a neighborhood watch official. Do you accept that? Is that what you're saying? I'll accept that, I'll, I'll accept that he was acting as a responsible citizen who happened to be the one that the citizen, the newsletter for that community says, if you see something that's suspicious, call George Zimmerman. But the fact that he happens to notice something while he's armed doesn't require him to get out of his car, go lock his gun in the trunk, and play by a different set of rules. He's licensed to carry that gun. And by the way, he's legally entitled to defend himself. Right, but he's not actually allowed to carry a gun as a neighborhood watch official. That's why you he's, saying that when he made wrong. the call to 911, he was acting... Well, I'm not wrong. That is the law, isn't it? You are wrong. You are wrong. I don't know who's talking so, to you about the law, but you're wrong. Right, there's so nothing neighborhood in the law watch officials, if you act as a neighborhood, neighborhood watch, watch captain, officials, there's... Right, they, they can all go weighed up with firearms, can they? Absolutely. You may have a little handbook that suggests that you don't, but to say that it's illegal to do so is a misstatement of the law. Let, let me suggest something to you. It is a terrible tragedy that Tre Trevon Martin is dead. His parents are suffering in unimaginable grief. That grief is not being helped by people coming to town uh, telling falsehoods in order to raise racial strife. The morning of February 26th, we had a peaceful community where blacks and whites went to church together, stood in line at the grocery to together, and didn't think that we had a problem. After some folks came to town and had their little rallies and made irresponsible speeches about murder and racial profiling, he's not a racist. It wasn't profiling. The reason that Trevon Martin is dead is not because he was black or because he wore a hoodie or because he was walking in the rain. It's because that six foot three young man made a terrible decision and a bad judgment and he decided to smack somebody in the face and break their nose, jump on them and smack their head into the ground. And in doing that, put him in reasonable fear for his safety. You're going to find that there was a, a dispute as to what happened with the gun. He was absolutely entitled to defend himself and that's why Trayvon Martin is dead not because of racial profiling. Well, I've not suggested racial profiling, all that your client was a racist, nor indeed am I trying to convict him or taking a side. My view from the start has been, it seems incomprehensible to me under any form of stand your ground or any other absurd law as I view it, that somebody could shoot somebody who turned out to be unarmed and not even be arrested on the night. In, the, in Britain where I come from, that would cause a sensation the like of which our justice system had never seen before. Florida clearly believes that this is the right way forward. I don't think it is. However, understand one thing very clearly. I am not trying to convict your client. I want justice to see its course. The argument against what's happened here with your client is that on the night, the investigation was basically concluded and he was sent home because there was no evidence to disprove George Zimmerman's story that he had been acting in self-defense. The reason I wanted you two guys on tonight was precisely to try and talk through some of the developments in factual information or otherwise to try and get a clearer picture of exactly what we're dealing with here. And I would argue, back to both of you, you've both been just as emotive in stating what you believe to be facts as other people have been on Trayvon Martin's side. And I'm not sure that does you, as the attorneys, a lot of credit, frankly. Let me suggest a difference, all right? The people who have been emotive at these rallies, A, were not there, and B, have not spoken to anybody who was there. 
The sole eyewitness to this, the only eyewitness who talked to the police that night, gave them his statement, said that he saw George Martin on the ground crying for help, being beaten by Trevon Martin. That's not a supposition. That's a fact. You can choose your opinions, but you can't choose your facts. Where we're going to find the facts is when the investigation is entirely completed, neither the Sanford Police Department nor the Florida Department of Law Enforcement nor the Department of Justice nor the special prosecutor owe you or me or the public the luxury of giving us every little fact as they do their investigation. When they're done, if we'll be a little patient and not convict them ahead of time, we'll find out how those facts apply to the law. And they apply to the Florida law, not the law in the United Kingdom or Ireland or some one of the other 23 states that don't, or the 28 states that don't have that law. The legislatures have decided that it's not ludicrous. The people elected to pass these laws have decided that it makes sense. It doesn't have to make sense to you. It makes sense to them, and it's the law. I mean, let's try and get to the factual detail of the injuries. When I interviewed Robert Zimmerman, George's brother, he told me that he had sustained a broken nose, and it was still broken today. Is that true? And if so, why don't you simply release an X-ray of the broken nose to corroborate that? Because part of the problem you've been facing in perception is that there doesn't appear to have been much sign of serious injury. If you released a picture, an X-ray, of George Zimmerman's nose broken, that would be helpful to your case, I would argue. Well, first of all, first of all, he's already been tried and convicted in the media. We're going to try this case in court, and that and all those all that evidence will be presented at that time, but not here, and not tonight, and not on this program. Right, but you can stay, state as a fact that his nose is broken. I can state as a fact that his nose is broken, but for the rest of but, but for me to establish it and to find, get, have it admitted in court, that is not going to happen tonight because this is not a courtroom. You're not a judge. We're not operating under the rules of evidence under the state of Florida. You're trying to get me to litigate this case right now. And, I, and as I have said many times, and I'm sure you've watched my other interviews, we're not going to litigate this case in the public media. This is going to be litigated, if at all, well, in actually, the actually, state of Florida. Yeah, actually, Mr. Sonnet, you've been litigating the case in actually, the too. That, that's, that, that's the point. I mean, you have been litigating a set of what you believe to be facts. You believe that George Zimmerman didn't defy instructions from the 911 operator not to follow Trayvon Martin. You believe that he was set upon by Trayvon Martin, beaten so badly he feared for his life that he had to take out his gun and shoot Trayvon Martin, even though Trayvon Martin and the people acting for him say that actually what happened is that your client followed him against instructions from the 911 operator and that maybe some altercation took place, but Trayvon Martin was unarmed and had been to a store to buy Skittles, taking them back to his father's house. He had every right and every expectation to get back to his father's house in one place. Instead, he was shot dead. And you, in your way, I would argue, are litigating the defense for your client without the facts. These aren't facts you're giving me about the fight and what happened. They are your supposition. They're not well, facts, well then, are let, let they? They are you what there. you believe then, to then have happened. The those are, those are the, that's the evidence that's been released from the police department. That's as close to facts as we have right now. But I'm confident when, this, when the rest of the facts, and, my, and we're able to show it in the court of law through admissible evidence, that it will show that George Zimmerman was acting in self-defense. And all the things that, you're that you were just stating, well, he went to the, you know, all he went to the 7-Eleven was only going to get Skittles. That's not, that wasn't released in the police report. I'm just going by what's there, and I'm giving you an interview. Well, so wait, wait, you, a minute, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry, the, sorry, I've wait, got wait, to, wait, wait, I have to jump. My statement, no, you're going to keep interrupting Mr. me. Mr. Sonnet, let me just jump in there. Of course it's not in the police report. Trayvon Martin was dead. How could it be in the police report he'd gone to buy Skittles? That's right. It's not in the police report, is it? That has not been released as a fact. And the only thing I've stated to you are things that have been released as facts from the authorities. And when this case goes to trial and the rest of the facts are released from the authorities, you will see that George Zimmerman 
acted in self-defense that night, and the rest of what you're telling me, you're trying to litigate this th this case here. Do you have some other questions for us so we can move on? If there's some question about yeah, I do, I do, uh, I do. American let Jewish me ask this. or something like that, let, then we let can me ask those. you. Why don't you acquaint me with the American legal process then? Is it a fact that your client has told his version of events to the police and that actually that is what you're basing factual evidence on? The word of George Zimmerman to the police on the night. You have no other factual evidence to support the fact that he had been set upon by Trayvon Martin, do you? It is the word of your client to the police, unless I'm wrong. Or wrong. And, you know, let me try.